stone Give me a bone Put it in my stew Every night Take a flight Wanna dance with you I'm scared of dying in I just feel like if I were to get hit by a car, the amount of pain I would experience wouldn't be over quickly and it would last a long time. I'd end up being hooked up to a machine and my entire family would have to decide all around me whether or not to let me live or keep me hooked up. I don't think that'd be appropriate and so I'd rather go basically any other way or spend the rest of my life with hiccups. And also I got this stew on the stove right now. It's basically a... This seven minutes song. <laughs> Beef. Beef. Carrots. Carrots. And I'm sitting here stirring it. Beef ragu. And I'm thinking about <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> That's me playing the trumpet. Ouch. Is it really seven minutes long? (laughs) 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 Wow. Well. Wow. Who did that one? That was was from Matt Donald's. (laughs) <laughs> Matt Donald. Matt Donald. I don't know where any of those sound it's clips from came from. It's from the episode of your show we did with Kid. Oh, that's yeah, why. You were not in Because that I don't watch uh, Valley Folk, and I was in the hospital for a month with my wife, so I wasn't there for that. This uh, user says, if this is not the opening music for episode 84 of the Valley cast, I will be shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares if it's four times as long as normal? It's art, damn it. Yeah. If you could te- uh, tweet at me, yeah. I would love to collaborate on something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, those car crashes? Yeah. Mm. Uh, welcome to the Valley Cast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what an interesting start to the episode. Today, we have some special guests. We have special guests, DJ and Sam from what? Only Stupid Answers. Hello. That's us. Yeah, what's now, up, my kids? Well, you know, we just got back from Fantastic We Fest. did just get back. Literally just stepped off the plane right into this room. We need to talk about our Airbnb adventure. <laughs> we do. <laughs> every year. Yeah, every there's year, always there's a, something, there's some huh? new Airbnb adventure. Man, we've had some Airbnb adventures in Austin together for Fantastic Fest, but this one was quite interesting. Yeah, it really kind of kept us up every single night. <laughs> yeah, literally every single night. Airbnb adventures, uh, it aired after Chippendale's Rescue Rangers after yeah. school in the 90s. <laughs> And Two it was seasons. about bees. <laughs> Went on a lot longer than you think. It did. It was yeah. like eight seasons. Years and yeah. years. Yeah. Uh, well, there was that season where they completely switched the language. It wasn't mm-hmm. English anymore. Yeah. And that was pretty interesting. Um, yeah. That was a mandate, though. It, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Considered a bold move, but now looking back in hindsight, a creative one that paid off in the end. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. <Fair enough. laughs> Agreed. So, um, guys, welcome. This is your first time. Well, Sam, you've been on the Valley Cast before, but DJ, this is your first time. This is time. my first time. Thank you yeah. for having me. Yeah, welcome. Uh, we'll have to get you on without this goofball sometime <laughs> so that we could get you really to talk about this your down. personal <laughs> stuff. <Yeah. laughs> Did you just crap your pants? Yep, that's what you're doing. <laughs> All right. Man, it's taking you a while. No, yep, <laughs> it's, we had a frog outside our Airbnb that made the same sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, Steve, that was a journey. I just watched you do like the seven stages of regret while letting it out. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't I had to be careful. That's why it wasn't one big long one. <laughs> they come out pace yourself sometimes. It did come out in segments, yeah, yeah, just yeah. in case. Um, <laughs> yeah. Good lord. <laughs> Hey, quick backstory: If you're new to our existence and you weren't here in our previous lives, uh, we worked with Sam and DJ at SourceFed. Yes, there you go. way back in the day. Yeah, we are, uh, we're a couple of old folks. Yep. A couple of historical. We got some history on our belts. Worked on some cool on the, shit together. Hanging off our belts. Right, hanging yeah. right off mm-hmm. our belts. With the keychains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too many keys. Yeah. Too, too, many, too keys. many keys on yeah. our belts. And it's what on one of those ones you can stretch out and yeah, let yeah. go and it snaps back You ain't back sneaking here. up on anybody. Nope. 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. But uh, but yeah, so Sam and DJ, you guys have a podcast. Mm-hmm. Yes. For the past three years, we've been doing Only Stupid Answers. That's cool. Yeah. It's a one-stop shop for knickknacks, paddy wax, movies, <laughs> TV show, comic book, video game news, that kind of stuff. Man, you got it down. Way to go. Thank mm-hmm. you. That's good. We've been practicing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, uh, we've been doing that. We do movie reviews on YouTube. You can find Might Be Awesome and a bunch of other stuff. We usually just, yeah, talk about the nerdy shit, nothing important. I so, love it though. Yeah. <laughs> did you guys, and you guys recorded some stuff while you were in Austin. Yeah. Oh yeah, we did reviews for all the movies we were able to see, good and bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good and also, bad. That's did, important to did know. Did a very special episode on gun control. Mm. Did you really? No, we didn't. No, we didn't. <laughs> no, no, no. That was fun yeah. control. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I would love to, um, uh, at some point in this podcast. I don't want to say deep dive into some of your thoughts on the movies, but just get like some quick quips about some of the yeah, fun well, we, stuff that you saw. We should at least tell people what Fantastic Fest is for those of you that have not heard of this. It's a film festival that's on its 15th year. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. 15 was a very important year for me. I don't know about you guys. Mm-hmm. It's the year I started growing hair downstairs. Yes. Hmm. And, and then your uh, mom told you to get that science experiment out of the kitchen. Yeah, mm-hmm. and she said take it to the second floor, which is why yes, I brought it please. back upstairs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so, but sorry. Yeah, so Fantastic Fest is a film festival that w- that uh, happens at the Alamo Draft House in Austin, Texas, mm-hmm. and um, every year it's kind of a showcase of genre films like sci-fi and horror and drama and animation and, and documentary and short form, long form, all sorts of cool shit, and yeah. it's just a place where we have gone many times, Sam and I have gone five, five times. Yeah. Consecutively. Yeah, consecutively, because we went for SourceFed way back in the day, and then we just got addicted to it, and we love it so much, and we've seen such films as, like, The Witch, and mm-hmm. Arrival, and love all of Green those. Room, uh, and Halloween, when that was Halloween. there. Halloween. Yeah. Um, um, what's that movie? Ooh, the, Greasy the, Strangler? Greasy the Strangler. Strangler. Greasy. Yes, I did. Dang, 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 dang. <laughs> Have dun, you seen dun, that? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, Steve yeah. introduced it to us. We and went it to was uh, awesome. Yeah. We went to New York and we stayed at it. Or where, Wrong. where was it? Arizona. Arizona. That's yeah, what it was. Close. We went to Arizona and I forced everyone to watch it. I've never seen it. Elliot was like, he was offended. Elliot <laughs> left the room multiple times. Yeah, nice. I think you were the only one that stuck it out. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I liked it. Well, and out. Bowman was there, so of course Bowman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Bo- yeah, well, that's yeah, a yeah. movie, Bowman. Bowman. That's a yeah. Bowman seal of approval. That's what do you have to say to the kids of America, presidential candidate Bernie Sanders? But I'm not. Uh, that, yeah, that thing is a crazy freaking masterpiece of weird. Yeah, and then like uh, they do secret movies. Like one year, the secret movie was Suspiria. Last year was Suspiria, the new mm-hmm. one. And then before that, it was, uh, was it Overlord? Or was Overlord? Overlord no, was a bigger, was just there. bigger deal. Uh, who was the year before? Oh, I never went to one until Wait, this I know, year. Wait, I know what it was. I was there. It was. Uh, it was. Shawshank Redemption. There Fuck. it is. Yeah. Repertory screening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey guys, you get to oh, watch no, this again. Oh no, it was Death again. of Stalin. Okay, there you go. Death of Stalin, oh, which I've was heard so that's fucking great. Good. Yeah. But yeah. this uh, year, so this year we all went again, yeah. and we had a nice little group of people, and we saw Jojo Rabbit, oh, which yeah. was Taika Waititi's jealous. New movie. Jealous. I got to meet him. Oh, I super jealous. Yeah. He uh, he stuck around. Fantastic fest, but in various states of <laughs> inebriation. Yes. And I have to assume he just got off like an international flight, like yeah. like forty eight hours, and he went straight there with a couple of drinks in him. He his, took his he took his shoes and jacket off. He took he was his well, he, he was like barefoot during the Q and A. He was like <laughs> he, like the he things was he was saying, and they weren't making nothing. He was saying was really making sense. Oh, and like no. Stephen Merchant was going like, "You all right, man?" And like <laughs> it was like really strange. Yeah. And then he oh. was there like the entire rest of the day yeah. just like walking around the draft house and like smoking with people just and hanging like out yeah using which... pieces of clothing <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> wow anyway but we saw jojo rabbit and then various other movies yes. and then the secret screening this year was dun, dun, dun. dolomite is my name oh, right. dolomite Eddie is Murphy, my name uh netflix movie uh it's like a what do you call those uh, it's, it's a Netflix take original. on the like black a... exploitation yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's like a biopic too yeah right? yeah. yeah for rudy ray moore um in his story and when it started up it was like at first i was like oh 
Yeah, it's on Netflix. Well, here, like, oh, well here's the thing. Yeah. We were the whole time you're at Fantastic Fest, you're trying to guess what the secret screening is going to be. And they do two of them. Yeah. Uh, f- two of them. Yeah. Fantastic Fest is usually two weeks long at, at the Draft House. And we usually go for the first week because two weeks of movies is insane. Too much. You usually see upwards to five movies a day. That's yeah. crazy. Um, and you could see more if That's you really That's exhausting. Want to. Yeah. It really is, man. It's a lot. And, you know, yeah. we were, we, a lot of times we were like, I'm so fucking exhausted. And someone was like, oh, yeah, you tired from watching movies? all day and you're like yes and it's like no. yeah you're sitting, in, you're sitting in a fucking dark room in, in a comfortable seat where they're bringing you food the whole time yeah. and alcohol and alcohol and you're and you're at a draft house so, so it's like tons of delicious booze and you're and being in, like people sometimes underestimate why being engaged is tiring yeah being in the <laughs> moment right. and paying attention and giving yourself and your all to one like uh, a stimuli yeah. be it a movie or even a teacher in school it's yeah. like sitting there for eight hours a day there's a reason you get tired and totally. you're exhausted at the end of the freaking totally. day and, and also we're trying to analyze it and try to right. come up with a, an opinion based That's on the a, thing. We're, a collection we, of work we <laughs> attended as press DJ Sam and myself and, and uh, the other people who were with us too and we had an obligation as press to because I was creating content while I was there and you yeah. guys were creating content while you were there and we have an obligation to be able to you know concise in a concise way explain if the movie was good or bad and what we thought about it and all of that and you got to be fucking completely you got to take it all in and and after watching like four movies in one day it's like holy shit did i even see that movie what yeah. did I, well, I don't even remember what i saw well, that's how you know what your what your favorites were because they're the ones that stick with you after totally you but let me say this about dolomite is my name is at first i was a uh, and then as it went on i was very pleasantly surprised mm-hmm. i enjoyed it quite a bit especially somebody who's trying to make their own stuff it, it, it touched me well the thing the other thing too is like like what i was going to say before was is like the whole time you're trying to guess what the secret secret screening is going to be and everyone's saying rumors and some people yeah. know but mm-hmm. some people are like it sounds like a rumor and the first you know when you start to talk to people like what do you guys think the secret screening is yeah like the word on the street was is that it was going to be dr sleep yeah which is the, the yeah. shining sequel which everyone's very excited about and then the next word on the street was maybe it's Dolomite on Netflix. And the next word on the street is maybe it's the, what's the second one that came out? Uh, the Lighthouse. The Lighthouse. Maybe it's yeah. The Lighthouse. And then yeah. someone decided to spread the rumor that it could be Cats, the new <laughs> Cats movie. Yeah. And that one really took off. Yeah, yeah. And they uh, made pins. They made pins. With Taylor Swift's cat character says, ask me about the secret screen. That's They're so funny. Out. And I, I mean, it's two and a half months out. There's no way the VFX are close to being what they want them to be. What a fun but troll. That would be so the well, it could be though. The That's the thing you don't know. The programmer came out and he was like, "If you ask me about cats, I'm going to scream." <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I bet you that was the the cat's marketing team. They're like, this. Let's just get the conversation going. Let's go with spread I mean, these pins. I mean, I truly, idea. I truly was like stoked. Yeah. <laughs> like I was like, if it's fucking cats, that's the perfect fucking movie to show at Fantastic Fest. At, like some fan- people, cat test, fantastic, fast. fantastic fest. <laughs> but so many people were like, if it's cats, I'm fucking getting the fuck out of here. Like people were pissed off about the idea of it being cats, but it wasn't cats. It was Dolomite, and yeah. DJ said he liked it, and yeah. basically any. I didn't see it because I was like, I need to wake up at 4 a.m. to be able to take get my 6 a.m. flight, so I had to go back to the Airbnb. But everyone who saw it said that it's really good, and it's like Eddie Murphy being really funny again, and and everyone was great, and yeah, yeah. If you guys have ever tried to, I mean, like you guys make YouTube videos, we do that. Uh, you do that. You do that. Maybe you guys do that. Um, if uh, you watch this, this is. It's just really inspiring <laughs> um, seeing somebody who at a time where there was no room for him to ever make something like this, put his all into it and be successful in his own right. And that's a cool test. It's a cool nod to Fantastic Fest. Yeah. He's made his own path. Oh, yeah. Situation. 100%. Um, you're, you're, I think your initial reaction is just based on the last, like, what, 20 years of Eddie Murphy. I get why you were yeah. like... Here we go, because, mm-hmm. I, again, no huge opinions on it, and there's been some, like, star-turning moments from him within all of this stuff, but it was a lot of, like, family mediocre films, like, yeah. almost like cut and paste with Eddie Murphy for a while, and people have been disappointed, except for Dreamgirls, where he stepped out, so I get the reaction, yeah. <clears throat> but then, like, I remember seeing the trailer and going, this could be a, another one of the good things, and yeah. it's going to be a turn, and it's the same feeling I have right now for the uncut gems with Adam Sandler. Yeah, have you seen Good Time? 
No. Uh, with starring Robert Pattinson. It's from the same director. Highly recommend it. Oh, I got to see yeah. Wait, did I see that? It. Which one is that? That's the Robert Oh, no, no, Pattinson. with Robert Pattinson. Yeah. It's, it's, the, it's a bank robbery yeah. one. It's it's amazing. And Where that was I a turn. It? Uh, I think it's on Amazon Prime. It was on Netflix for a little bit. Yeah, I think Might it's on, uh, streaming on Amazon Prime. But uh, it's the same directors. Um, and it's just it, it's just a panic attack of a movie. And it sounds like this is going to be even <laughs> more Dude, so. Adam Sandler looks next level yeah. in it. Yeah. Ugh, I miss seeing 100%. dramatic Sandler. He killed it in Punch Drunk Love. Yeah, this uh, is dramatic Sandler, like, but with like a really big Sandler esque character turn. It's it's not like subdued dramatic Sandler in, mm-hmm. in Punch Drunk. This is like that. People are saying Oscar buzz. Yeah, yeah. well, and apparently he's just. Uh, I heard a description of his character is just a whirlwind of bad decisions. Like it's just a cascade <laughs> of like every decision he makes is the wrong yeah. one. It it looks really. I'm bummed that we have to wait for December. I know. Ooh, and yeah. his co-star in it is Adele Dazim. Is she? Yeah. Well, okay. She actually, looks familiar. I actually yeah. have. Uh, Please welcome the wickedly talented <laughs> one and only Adele Dazim. Adele Dazim. 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 All right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Done with that. Yeah, yeah those um, stream decks are fun. Yeah, man, yeah. we have a lot of fun with <laughs> that. That thing's there's, amazing. I love there's it. a lot of sounds here. Oh, wow. oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> it's loud. Ooh, play on that like uh, Joey classic. Part of the road. <laughs> Looks like play Joey that classic Kampar Alf quote. <laughs> oh yeah, do you guys remember Alf pretty well? Remember that quote mm-hmm. he the always used to quote say from Alf that you'd ever his remember? His catchphrase. Really? Where's the cat? <laughs> <laughs> remember that? <laughs> remember that catchphrase? You don't remember um, that catchphrase. So anyway, to get back alive. on track a little bit, let's talk about just really quickly, kind of like what our favorite movies at Fantastic. Top like, three from each of you. Work. Go. My, oh, my top. Well, you guys go first, and then I'll. Go. Okay, vast. The vast of night. It's coming to Amazon Prime, uh, and it's a sci-fi Twilight Zone esque adventure between a, two teenagers in the 1950s hearing a signal over the radio and trying to figure out what it is. Ooh. It's great, and it goes full Twilight Zone with it. It's Yay. amazing. Uh, that Jojo Rabbit. You guys know what it is. I really enjoyed it, and I think and I throw Dolomite in there because of how much of a surprise it was. Cool. Nice. Uh, for me, uh, that's a tough one. I might say uh, uh, Dolomite. Um, Jalakatu, which was this mm. Indian uh, uh, a, landlocked jaws, yeah, is what they, they, they described it. it, which is oh. kind, of kind of departure from that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's kind of an unfair <laughs> comparison. But basically, in this in this small Indian village, a buffalo gets loose and just starts wreaking havoc, which is bad. But what's worse is that every man in the village decides they're going to be the one that gets it. So by the end of the movie, you've got hundreds of guys roaming the village, wreaking havoc, trying to kill this buffalo. Yeah, I think um, that the the person that introduced the movie said yeah. there's like 80 different characters in the movie. Yeah. There's four that are actual actors. Yeah, and the director had like 80 people to be like okay now do this yeah, <laughs> yeah. and there's there's a scene at the end that it's just like it probably wasn't done with cg and it's like how just just human bodies flailing oh. on top of each other like yeah what? a lot of it is like because i saw it too yeah. uh, a lot of it is like you can't tell what's cg and what's not and the bowl like havoc is like really well done and, yeah and the effects are pretty amazing and i i <laughs> point i say this one and my next one mostly because they're movies that i didn't have like like huge standouts but mostly these are movies that i would not have been able to see any place else my last one was butt boy but which, <laughs> but which is almost impossible to describe if you haven't seen it. Uh, I hate it and so, I love it. So, um, it's what, like a what Fincher. Was the, yeah, what was the what was the inciting exam? Uh, he his, oh, uh, prostate. his prostate. He gets a prostate exam, <laughs> and then uh, discovers uh, the ability that he he just starts uh, putting stuff up his butt. He likes to put stuff. Up it's his like butt. Uh, he put stuff up his butt, but like it's like the 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 TARDIS. <laughs> it, it, what, actually, one hundred percent. The TARDIS. It's the yeah, TARDIS. The TARDIS. <laughs> the TARDIS. One hundred percent. Because there's like within Where's the first. The... <laughs> <laughs> in the first ten minutes, he's like, uh, uh, like it starts with a bar of soap, and then he like looks at a dog, and then the dog's gone, <laughs> and then and then he looks. But at it's a, a serious tone. Oh yeah. yeah, and then and then he sees a baby in the park, and then suddenly the, you Baby's cut to missing. you cut the cops trying to find the baby and everything and it flash forwards it flashes forward nine to five years it's a little the cu- title card says nine years mm. but the timeline is a little dubious and a cop ends up trying to find figure out what's he going to on solve these disappearances yeah but it's and, like a david fincher movie they yeah. take it they're like they're, there's like a scene <laughs> like there's like a scene from heat where they're in a diner together and like no one knows anything no. yet but like you can tell that this cop is somehow related to what happened like all those years ago <laughs> yeah. when things started disappearing <laughs> and it becomes like a manhunt to find this guy and he finds like at crime scenes he finds a little like dingleberries there and he's like <laughs> what does it mean and it, 
It's so it no, it's amazing. It's so well done. But, I left and I watched a whole movie about a guy who shoved stuff up his butt, and yeah. I was so angry with myself. <laughs> yeah. and, but I'm I'm not upset that I saw it. I'm yeah. just angry at the premise and how well they did it. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because uh, uh, it had my favorite. I think my favorite scene in the movie is has the typical like the chief's like, "Are you telling me that this is what's happening?" But because of the premise, you're 100 percent with the chief. <laughs> like he just right. lays out the whole. But you're telling me this guy that is your you AA there. sponsor is shoving stuff <laughs> up his butt and is digesting them inside and the cop's like well I don't know about the digestion situation but I do think it's making but him stronger but there's some sort of sci-fi or magic element there because sure. how is he putting things in there, there. when they came out they did the Q&A <laughs> after <so> stupid. <laughs> yeah when it came out after he's like yeah it just started off as I'm sad I didn't a, get to see it I want to see it really bad it's a suspension of we'll uh, find you that's one. the thing with debriefs Van- there it is that's the thing with Fantastic Fest too is that there's like a, there's a ton of movies like that yeah where you're just like I don't know what I'm getting into I see a synopsis and I go I hope I get it and then I go see it and then you rate it and you're like okay I saw that what were your three my three were definitely Jojo Rabbit and then um, I saw this documentary called You Don't Know Me N-O-M-I and it's a documentary it's like a crazy amazing hilarious deep dive into showgirls the movie Showgirls. Oh, I saw something about Dude, that. Dude, yeah. it's so good because it's just like, the person is just like, I know it's the worst movie ever made, but it's also the greatest movie ever made mm-hmm. and I'm gonna tell you why. And it's just like this crazy, really funny analysis of like every scene and how Elizabeth Berkeley's character is just like, complete she just flies off the handle at any moment for no reason and they just just like a super cut of her freaking out at people and like it's just this really funny shit and they also had a brown rice and vegetables eating contest before the movie (laughs) because in the movie they keep mentioning that because they're strippers their only diet is brown rice and vegetables and it's just this like weird thing they keep bringing up in the movie and it's just it's paul verhoeven so it's like fucking bonkers and not really about what it's supposed to be about. Right. But um but yeah, it was great. I loved it. And then my third favorite was Deerskin. Which, which I saw is, the first hour of. But yeah. we had to get hit hit your flight so I missed the rest of yeah, it. Yeah, it's uh the guy Quentin du Dupieu du, 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 du or Dupo or something. Director yeah. of of rubber. Yeah. The oh, movie okay. about the telekinetic killer the tire. tire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This one's crazy because it's basically about this guy who buys a deerskin jacket and then realizes that his dream is to be the only person in the world with a jacket. <laughs> so he sets off to kill everyone and take their jackets. That's so weird. So that he uh, can have the only jacket <laughs> in the world. And it's fucking so funny. And it's so fucking weird. And, and it's just like really amazing shit. Well, okay, um, the one we missed that I'm really bummed w- about uh, because it got a crazy history uh, after it was released way back in the 60s was V, I think it was VFW. The oh, v- VFW. The very yeah. first found footage movie ever made. This oh, guy wow. made it himself, um, and he VFW uh, was that post-apocalyptic movie. But I don't know what movie you're okay, talking so about. Okay, so it's yeah. a different one. But oh, he, uh, there's somebody else made this. The very first uh, found footage movie tried to release it. Studios didn't know what it was, and uh, the only like reels he had of it burnt down in a fire. What were, year did it come out? Somewhere in the sixties. Uh, sixties. Um, and um, but it, at a certain point, someone found a VHS. The original reels are gone. Just a VHS exists, <laughs> and somebody online took it, cut off the credits on the front and end and they uploaded it as well basically the movie's about a a family birthday party and then they all get abducted by aliens but it got oh, cool. it uploaded and people were like this is real and yeah, so they tried to pass off as a real artifact and it like... circled for a, like decades oh, as great. real evidence of an, an alien abduction an actual abduction that it was filmed yeah yeah, wow. yeah man that's fantastic fast so real quick because uh, uh, two of sam's choices were streaming movies how about yours dolomite was one the other two i, I have no idea Not sure steve do you know if any of yours were... I mean, JoJo's coming out to the theaters, yep. so you'll see that soon. I have no idea. About it's just the other an interesting ones. commentary on you. Just on don't the, know on the current state, though, right? Like some of the best movies you saw aren't going to be theatrical releases necessarily. Yeah, yeah and that's this the thing. Stuff you saw, too. you're going to see digitally. If yeah, you... Fantastic Fest. Like it's kind of a grab bag of whether you see something. If you see something you really like, whether you'll ever see it again, because a lot of these movies don't have distribution yet. Yeah, mm. and so they're looking for distribution, and they just might not find and they it. They hope people talk about it I'm, on a I'm, podcast. Please. Right. I'm hoping Deer Skin. Gets out I'm pretty just sure I want to see the rest of it. it was so Actually, funny. I mean, Rubber's such a cult 
hit. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll see DC. No, speaking of that, actually mentioning him on podcasts, I went on Gus and Eddie's podcast and I mentioned my all time favorite movie. I saw it, Fantastic Fest. And the person who owns the distribution rights to that movie reached out to me and was going to keeps me updated whenever it comes to what? America because <laughs> yeah. you can't buy it. It's called Three Foot Ball and Soul. It's oh, in Japan. Yeah. That's the one I was just talking about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's and it won't ever come here. But the person emailed me and was like, "Hey, it's going to be at a film festival in San Francisco if you want to go see it." I'm wow. like, oh, "That's t- I th- I don't want to go know. all the way up there to watch a movie, but yeah. like watch." one movie yeah. and come back well we felt the same way about Anna and the Apocalypse which yeah. also premiered at Fantastic Fest like a couple years ago or last year or something mm-hmm. and that was one of those movies where it was like oh fuck I love it the music's so good it's really good I want to see it again and then you're like uh, I, didn't, I don't know if it ever came out and it is out now though yeah. right yeah. it's on Amazon yeah. Prime I think yeah. yeah I went to a Q&A with the whole crew and cast nice. at the Arclight and they were great yeah if you guys haven't seen Anna and the Apocalypse that's on Amazon Prime you should check it out I recommend it. but to your point like um uh, did you see Ballad of Buster Scruggs, the Coen Brothers' most recent movie? Uh, some of it, yes. It, it went um, straight to Netflix, and they were like, yeah, we didn't even really bother talking to anybody else because nobody would want to make it. And stuff like like Dolomite, that used to just be a movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so now what movies that would just you, you used to just be able to go see in theaters go... I mean, God bless Netflix and yeah. other streaming platforms for investing in these movies, yeah. but it's a, it's a bummer that they just don't get... They're not just movies that are out. That I people can fear go see. the day that Netflix wakes up and does the thing where it's not going to take as many creative like swings because yeah. it'll eventually get there. But right now they're the, like this bastion of like people can go there with their crazy ideas and yeah. they'll get funding and it's awesome. The hope is that it isn't the fear that you have and that they they just go to stream and they they miss that experience in the theaters. The hope is that. Netflix and it sounds like they already are and Amazon will sometimes take some of their best hits yeah. and make them theatrical and they've done it they did it with uh, Manchester right Manchester by Sea actually I really like the way Amazon does it because I know Netflix gets crap because they want day and date theater and yeah. streaming at the same time Amazon will usually drop a movie in theaters like six to eight months prior to it coming to the yeah. platform yep. uh, and so that allows pretty lengthy um theater runs for their stuff. I know that the Breaking Bad movie, El Camino, is yeah. going to be in a limited run mm-hmm. in theaters. I want to see it in theaters. At the same, same time, it's on now. Netflix. Yeah, I know. I was talking to Owen about it, and I was like, should we go see this? And he was like, I'd rather be able to like be in my underwear mm-hmm. and have a joint and just like <laughs> the way I enjoy the show. Yeah. Well, depending on the theater, I mean, you could probably <laughs> yeah, 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 be just the fine. one Pee Wee went to mm-hmm. comes to mind. Yeah, you just go at a certain time at night, maybe like two weeks in yeah. Tuesday yeah. at twelve. I went to it too. And it was in like the biggest theater at AMC, but it was at 11 p.m. And I was like on a Tuesday and I go, I'm never going to get to see this because my kids can't go and my wife doesn't want to. And all yeah. my friends have seen it. I went there. I was in the theater by myself yep. watching mm. it. Chapter I don't two. know if I'd like that. I, I, I don't Being know. There's by something, myself there's for a scary to, movie like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there is something to go in, in the in you know the midday movie, like mm-hmm. not, just matinee showing, paying less for your ticket. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, totally, totally. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's Fantastic Fest. It's really cool. It's, it's, there's just, you know, year after year, you just discover some kind of new director or new genre or new movie that you never thought you'd ever and be able to see. New yeah. things that could happen in an Airbnb that you wouldn't expect. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, we stayed in this really cool Airbnb uh, that was a little off the beaten path, but still fairly close to the theater so yeah. it wasn't too far it's called a hilton um, <laughs> no, i don't quite like understand this, what an airbnb is it was like this a and b unit that yeah. was like a house like a duplex yes and and the a unit sam and dj stayed in and the b unit me and my friend josie and Bree stayed oh, b in. squad the b squad and so one night like i like I didn't have as crazy of as an experience as DJ and Sam did, but one night, just kind of in the middle of the night, you could hear some kind of like sound up in the ceiling, and I was just like, "Huh, maybe it's a nightmare or something." Back to bed, and then I went to sleep. <laughs> and then the next morning, I get to the theater. We all get to the theater, and we're all talking about the movie we're going to see and stuff. And then Sam is like, "Missing." I was like, "Did you?" <laughs> <laughs> we had to go in after him. No, I was just like, hey, did anybody hear that weird sound in the ceiling? And Sam was like, yeah, it kept me up all night. Yeah. No, it scared the shit out of me. I got, we got back. It was the second night we were there. I was uploading, I, I'm doing a new show now called One More Time. And Ooh, you pr- go, plug it, baby. It's a podcast and a YouTube show. Just one more time, then search my name. You're good. Um, so I was uploading uh, episodes for that. And I started hearing like little scratchy scratches. And it started to kind of like, run around upstairs mm-hmm. but like with some weight on it i'm like mm-hmm. it's it's probably just a rat i mean the thing is is like deal. we're watching like fucked up 
movies and yeah. a lot of them are horror movies and some of them are like trippy psychological weird like mental breakdown yeah like movies. japanese man living in the attic <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, exactly. yeah 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 um and so it doesn't help um but that was your experience. What yeah, was your experience? Yeah, well, so, so the um, it was like three in the morning. I want to say this was night two. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I was out in the hall, and Sam was like, yeah, "There's something in the ceiling." And so <laughs> we, we go, we go into a space, and there's one of those like little crawl space doors. But it's one of those like you know, it's so tight that your face is gonna be right there. And we both looked at each other like, "Nope, nope." nope, <laughs> nope I really nope, whatever, wanted to whatever's do it. up there. I don't need to be that close to it. Uh, and so it was on his side. And then at about um, six in the morning. I hear like the, it sounded like it was trying to like pry up pieces of wood and stuff. Like it, want, it was. It wanted in. It wanted in. And, uh, and I heard it on my he side. He was hungry. Yeah, yeah. And it was just one of those like, and it was still pitch black out. Uh, and it was just like, what do I, how do I, and it just, that was the way it was the next few nights. You just, every once oh. in a while. But no, hear, it definitely got in a fight with something else up oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it started thudding around at one point. And you know those, when you go to sleep, you can, you're like dreaming, but you can fully hear yes. and feel everything in the room. Yeah. In this like dream state, I heard something on the ceiling fall onto the bed and started oh, crawling over the, the covers. But I had like a little bit of sleep paralysis, so I couldn't move. What? I swung my arm. Nothing was in the room. Yeah. I couldn't go to sleep for like an hour after that. Yeah. Well, you had the best experience. <laughs> the, um, oh, yeah. Are you talking about the vent? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the- uh, well, Plus, was your heart room- is beating. Did right your now? room like, have really a- hard right now. My room had blackout curtains. No. I oh, did. So it was mean, like- so- Pitch black in my room. No, I didn't have I didn't have blackout curtains, but it was it it's was weird, Vin like, Diesel from Pitch Vin Black. black. <laughs> um, his just eyes his face. just uh, covering yeah. the window. For <laughs> <laughs> um, Is this good? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, it was weird because uh, I haven't experienced this in, unless I visit like my grandparents or whatever, where it's just like woods behind the the house, which is oh, always, yeah. always feels weird. Once you've lived in a city for a while, it always feels a little weird. But there was one night where uh, it if I heard stuff crashing around by the bathroom and then there was stuff where i couldn't tell if it was like you in the uh, in the adjacent bathroom or it in the ceiling or maybe i'm just losing it because i'm in my sleep but i heard something near the vent and the vent was facing the bed so i turned the flashlight on my phone towards the vent and i heard it skitter away no yeah so then i went to the vent and i adjusted it so that like the vent the vent blades were like facing to the ceiling <laughs> Uh, and then our, our, the last day Jesus. when we went to, when we woke up dead there was dead roaches by like every window mm-hmm. <laughs> and all, a bunch of my cables had little little chew marks on them so yeah. we're we're done yeah that wasn't <laughs> sorry I wanted to set the tone with spooky music should have done good. that a while ago <laughs> <laughs> no it's still scary. <laughs> I uh, mean, uh, well, last year we had people walk into our Airbnb. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Happened. And the year before that, our Airbnb, the guy got evicted from it. Yeah. Well, we were given a, a bad Airbnb. Like, we were put into a bad Airbnb situation because they yeah. weren't allowed to actually use their place as an Airbnb. So mm-hmm. we got, like, fully kicked out of, on our asses. Yeah. Did you get your money back? Yeah. All right. Yeah. But, but, you know, it was like, it was one of those things where it was like we had to go find somewhere else at the last minute. And it yeah. was like a pain in the ass. But, Something else about this situation was I ended up hitting up the Airbnb person and oh, saying yeah, yeah, yeah. I hit them up because like I didn't like that Sam wasn't sleeping that night. That made me feel really bad. So I was like, I'm going to hit up this motherfucker and see what's going on. So I hit up the guy and I was like, hey, so. um, Motherfucker. Because he hit me up and was like, is everything okay? You guys having a good time? And do you need anything? And Did you so- like the rat? <laughs> <laughs> did you did you meet my son yet? Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, he. So I hit him up and I was like, listen, there's something in the ceiling, it sounds like. Like in between the, like in a crawl space or something, it just sounds like something's crawling around up there. And it's like, I don't know if it's cause for concern, but I'm letting you know. And then he hit me up. He messaged back, is it happening during the day or night? And I was like, it's happening at night. And then he didn't answer back. <laughs> that was it. He just like, that was it. Because you broke the curse. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What if it is no, just he, his son? No, he yeah. saw at night, and then he looked up and went, my God, it's <laughs> happening again. And then he died from behind. <laughs> he died. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was no good. It, it was creepy. It, it could have been his son who just like flips the sheets in the morning yeah, when we're yeah, not yeah. there. The, uh, uh, the first night when I was hearing it, I was getting kind of tired of it, so I took a coat hanger, and I started banging on the ceiling, and it didn't phase whatever it was at all all it just kept moving as if nothing had happened yeah because you were trying to like scare it a little bit yeah i was right? trying to see if maybe i could like you know calm down man, man take a nap. just a 
attacking cockroaches and just yeah. feasting on them above you. I know. Crazy. Well, it sounded like it was definitely like it could have been rats. Uh, bats was an idea that was floated, but I think we would have heard more squeaks like, or flapping. Yeah. Maybe yeah, yeah, who yeah. knows? It definitely sounded like it was like two. Maybe it's a possum. Mammals. Yeah. Mammals. I don't think about that. Like squirrels. wrestling or something. Maybe could've squirrels. Could have been squirrels. Could've been squirrels. Might have been a bear. Bear. You know, I don't know if it could have been a elephant. <laughs> anyway, dodo so yeah. bird. No, but that's Austin, man. We could could be been... dodo birds up in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> Austin, we might have dodo <laughs> birds. You don't know. You don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, so that's that. That was our story from Austin. Hey guys, welcome to the ad portion of the show. Welcome. It's time for some ads. All right, we'll get back to the show in just a second. But first, we're going to talk about Stitch Fix. Describe your look in one word. Casual, sophisticated, playful. What's yours, Steve? I guess it would be what? Mine is a couple words. I call it figuring it out. However you dress, Stitch Fix has the expert personal stylists that can help you look your best. Personal style is like a fingerprint to everybody. Everyone has their own. Whatever your style, the experts at Stitch Fix are ready to help you express yourself. Not all clothes are a fit for all men. With Stitch Fix, your personal stylist will send you clothing that makes you look your best. Less one size fits all, more this fits your style. I got this pink ditty for all of you that are watching from Stitch Fix. Oh, that's like nice. It. That's nice. It's really oh, cool because if you work nice. with your stylist, you could be like, I want all pink things this month. Please give me some pink things and they'll send you a bunch of pink stuff. Mm, that's nice. Or you could go, can I have two pink things and three plaid? And they'll do that. They listen to you. Use your voice. People will hear you. Stitch Fix is an online personal styling service that delivers your favorite clothing brands right to your door. To get started, go to stitchfix.com slash valley <laughs> and get 25% off when you keep everything in your box. That's what we're going to do for you today. We're going to set you up with a personal shopper who will get your preferred style and ship a box of clothes, shoes, and accessories directly to your door. There's no commitment required and you only pay for what you keep. Shipping, exchanges, and returns are always free. And it's really dope because if you don't keep everything, you get a bag full of clothes and you can shove it into like one of those blue mailboxes on the corner. It's always fun. Mm -hmm. Plus, the $20 styling fee is automatically applied towards anything you keep from your box. You'll never have to think about looking good again with Stitch Fix. Again, to get started today, go to stitchfix.com slash valley and get an extra 25% off when you keep everything in your box. That's stitchfix.com slash valley. Stitchfix.com slash valley. Nice work, Joe. Thank you, sir. Guys, boo! Ooh. Boo! It's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> Halloween time! Gall darn it. Remember when planning your costume as a kid was like the most fun you could do ever? Yes. It's better than even Christmas sometimes. My favorite uh, question or answer that I got from Jackson when I was like, what do you want to be for Halloween this year? He said... A washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are you going to make that kid's dreams come true? I didn't Jeff? do it, and now he'll never want to do it again. Oh, man. Being a washing machine would be a sweet Maybe that's what I'll do costume. this year. Yeah, yeah, you should be a washing machine. Yeah. Uh, well, guys, uh, now that you're an adult, Halloween feels less Halloween-y, doesn't it? Well, MeUndies is bringing back that childlike joy of picking out the perfect costume with their spooky prints and Halloween costume onesies. That's okay. right. Costumes. Onesies. That's what they're doing here at at MeUndies now, all right? Those are going to be the most comfortable costumes. Dude, this morning, I actually wore the MeUndies pizza onesie. Did you? Yeah, it yeah. was cold. So I zipped it on, and I played some uh, Zelda um, while I was wearing my the onesie. New oh, I got the man. new Zelda. And it's really pizza. nice. Oh, man. Dude, and I was in my warm pizza onesie in the MeUndies material, that micromodal fabric that's just so ooh, so soft ooh, on my buns. So, mm. Guys, they're spooky soft. They're like designed to be the best thing you've ever put on your body soft. I'm all right. Being jealous soft. Like want... uh, softer than a fluffy kitten soft. Mm, that's soft. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> a kitten dressed up in a pumpkin costume. Guys, softer than the brain zombies love to eat. Oh, too far? Well, you get the idea, guys. These are the softest undies known to man, and they're also available in sizes extra small to 4XL, soft for all. And MeUndies has the most unique prints out there, but the Halloween prints are on another spooky level, guys. This year, MeUndies is coming out with a variety of festive prints to really put the boo in booty. Boo. Didn't think MeUndies would end up in your Halloween costume game? <laughs> well, think again, guys. Their unique prints are designed to be mixed and matched and turned into the most guaranteed first prize at the costume contest costume. Ooh. 
And if you don't feel like leaving your house, that's cool too. Just wear the Halloween costume onesies to pass out candy and you're good to go. So guys, MeUndies has a great offer for our listeners. For any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off and free shipping. That's a no-brainer, especially because they have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. So to get your 15% off your first pair of free shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash valley. That's MeUndies.com slash valley. And we love them undies so much. I'm wearing them right now. Mm. And you're going to love it. So mm. go to MeUndies.com slash valley. I'm going to get one of those Wendy's. Hit me with the new track, sir. You got it, Joe. Mm. Steve, I'm glad you're talking about the holidays because it's never too early to talk about the holidays when it comes to your mouth. Oh, yeah. You like that segue? Yeah, I do. Holiday season, you don't want to be taking closed mouth photos while everyone else is grinning ear to ear. Yeah, do no, you? No, with no. their confident chompers. Get, no. Come on. You got to get that photo ready smile and getting that smile, you're going to start now. It's easier than ever with clear aligners from Candid, Ooh, everybody. Candid. Candid's aligners can help straighten your teeth faster than traditional wire braces, and treatment takes just six months on average, compared to my daughter, who just went through a year and a half of, of wire braces, and oh, will do a second year and a half of wire braces. Oh, very no. Soon. You got to uh, get her on the Candid train. Get her on train. the Candid train. An experienced orthodontist who is licensed in your state creates a custom treatment plan, and then they show you a 3D preview so you can see how your teeth will look after you're done. That's just visual science, everybody, and that's just cool. Candid's aligners are comfortable, removable, and completely invisible. Hopefully not so invisible that you couldn't find them. No, no, no you need to have them. Or maybe not complete. Like, they're invisible, but not like you can't. You, you know can what I mean. You can find them. Elliot says you can find them. Candid ships your aligners directly to you, so there's no hassle of going to the orthodontist office, and Candid costs 65% less than braces. Oh, that's a win! That's crazy good! And with each line of purchase, Canda donates $25 to Smile Train, who brings safe, 100% free cleft lip and palate treatment to children around the globe. Aww. And that's awesome and important. Aww. It'll get me in the heart spot. Aww. Get you, get you in the mouth spot and me in the heart spot. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, get your photo ready smile by the holidays. Go to candidco.com slash valleycast and use the code valleycast to get $75 off. That's candidco.com slash valleycast. Code valleycast for $75 off. Candidco.com. What? The code is valleycast. The code is valleycast. Yep. The code is valleycast. Candidco.com slash valleycast. Thank you to Candid and thank you to all of our sponsors today. Thank you, sponsors. And now back to the show. Back to the show. Tell us more about what you guys are working on right now. Let's talk about that. So for Only Stupid Answers, we do weekly movie reviews. We're able to go to press screenings because uh, they people finally got back to our emails. Mm-hmm. And are officially press. Good for boom. you. Pretty fun. Bam. Um, and we do weekly reviews for like the newest movies and uh, try to keep people informed on what's good, bad, and in between. And also we do like movie uh, TV show reviews as well for like all the superhero stuff. What's the good, yeah. the bad, and the ugly for movies and TV shows right now? Like what's your favorite thing you've seen lately? Not Fantastic Fest. Yeah. Something like more that's in the in the zeitgeist. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like what's your favorite TV show, movie thing, and what's the least favorite thing? Um, I'll be I mean, we do uh, some reviews for the DC Universe apps where you got to pay like seven to eight bucks a month and get those. Yeah. Um, Titans was pretty rough for the mm-hmm. first season for me. That was not super fun. But you stuck with it. We stuck with it because then we got Doom Patrol and Doom Patrol was fantastic. I heard good that's things. good. Yes. Yeah, that was good. a wonderful exploration of what it means to be a person and finding your identity. It was great. That's the one Anna is in? Anna yeah. 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 She and plays she a really cool one, role. Yeah, she's in one of the best episodes too. No shit. Yeah. That's cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she plays a great role. And also, just uh, Righteous Gemstones is really good on oh, HBO man, right now. Yeah. It's so good. Elliot's been freaking out over it. It's I, it's yeah. insane. I it's did. Good. I went on um, a friend of ours, Whitney uh, Van Lanningham. Fun name to say, hard for me to say. Whitney um, Van Lanningham. <laughs> <laughs> um, she does like cartoon reviews, and I checked out Steven Universe, and I just finished it because oh, I, it's great, right? I binge. Yeah. God, that is such an inspiring show, and yeah. I wish I watched it when I was a kid because it really helps you understand who you are Aww. and loving yourself and figuring out when to let go, uh, and also what relationships can and it's like be. really deep stuff. Oh wow, yeah, I hope kids are watching that. Oh yeah. Yeah. What it means to be you and when you get to be with somebody else, what that can feel like for you, good and bad, and how you can maybe work through some of those struggles. It's so cool. And beautiful music, too. So anyways, that's good. And yeah. Bad. So if you want um, more of our, the opinions of stuff like that, you can Yo. check out our podcast, Only Stupid Answers. You want those Titans reviews, that's on YouTube mm-hmm. uh, at Only Stupid Answers as well. And then for our normal mu- movie reviews, we're doing stuff that might be awesome and more explainers and stuff like that. I know for me... Um, I've been watching, uh, I'm behind, but uh, I've been 
been watching The Terror, the AMC show The Terror. Oh, yeah, uh, I've never heard of it. Yeah, no. so um, it was supposed to be a a like a limited series, and then a successful. So now it's an anthology. So now there's a second season, which I hear is not very good. Uh-huh. But the first season, which is the one I'm watching now, is based off a horse historical fiction book that elaborates on um, these two ships, uh, the HMS Erebus and the HMS Terror, that were supposed to find a trade route. Uh, through the Arctic Circle, like just oh. to China, and it's surprising it didn't go great. They, they in the, in the real history they just vanished off the face of the earth. Yeah. I think they didn't find the ships until like 2014. Oh wow! Well, yeah. So this story, and were they alive? They were not, unfortunately. <laughs> they were not. Uh, this story was the crew. They just okay. got lost. Was, and, and they, imagine well, it for like 70 years. They were just <laughs> floating. <laughs> Here's what blew my dumb brain, uh, because it's the 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 story. The fiction part is is the story imagining what happened during that time, and there right. is a supernatural element. But like a lot of these, the real terror is the what people do when they're in tense situations. Isolation, what desolation. I didn't understand. So this is like 1840. They had supplies for three years. Like there was, people weren't like, yeah, we're not going to go looking for them for like three years when they run out of supplies. And and just the idea of like the mid 1800s, you're supposed to be on a boat for three years. And it's like, they don't have refrigerators. They don't have electricity. Like what is, uh, Uh, warmth, where they are at. uh, Yeah. 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 So like, and it just blew my mind that these people were just, you just threw them into the Arctic for three years and like, well, hope for the best. Hope hope it works out. Yeah. And it uh, it didn't, it didn't, well, because (laughs) in what happens in the show, and I don't know if, if this is similar to what happened in real life is there's a, there's a moment and, uh, Jared Harris is in the show and he plays a similar role that he did. What the fuck? Napoleon Dynamite? No. Finally, uh, can you imagine that yeah, guy's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in this drama? Uh, he plays a similar role that he plays in Chernobyl, where Got he's it. the guy that's like, "Hey, don't do this," and everybody's like, "Fuck you!" And then yeah. everything goes to shit. Um, and uh, they get stuck in an ice drift for a year, like two years, like two winters. They're just stuck in the ice, and they have to wait for the thaw. And I just watched a, a scene where they're like, Jesus "Everybody's Christ. stoked because they're fi- the sun's finally going to show up again," and because of where they're at, it peaks up. And then goes right back down. Jesus, and you're Christ. like, I, this is a nightmare. Yeah, two this seconds is, of yeah, day. This, <laughs> yeah. this is a nightmare. It's like depression. Like yeah. you're like full depression and I, like I, madness. Yeah, endless darkness and endless cold. Yeah, I literally Ugh. couldn't imagine. Like, like maybe you know, uh, if you live back in that time, it, I could possibly see myself doing the wagon train out to the west maybe i mean even that's like maybe. dude i'm staying in this fucking town until i, I mean die. you had yeah. you had 15 years or you didn't have a lot of <laughs> right. choices back yeah. then right but maybe like, you feel more reckless <laughs> <laughs> but just the the idea of just i think it's similar to uh you know what we would have with space travel now it's just you're going to the, literally the most hostile environment ever yeah. right and without hope you any can knowledge out. of like, what's out there yeah no thank you yep and that's what it's mm-hmm. always been that just is like the ultimate that sounds like event horizon meets the thing meets like yeah. freaking the shining with ghost the ice ship. like yeah just horrible crap <laughs> ghost yeah. ships great yeah yeah, yeah. Bad, but great <laughs> the <laughs> beginning of ghost ship that one scene uh-huh. is great. it's the only thing anyone ever remembers yeah. about ghost ship <laughs> i think uh, event, i know it's getting a show now but i think event horizon's underrated i like event i love horizon. horizon's yeah. like really yeah. scary yeah, yeah it's no. uh it is fucked up i had no. friends in college that wouldn't watch it like yeah. they're like i saw that back in the day and i can't it's very disturbing yeah. graphics are dated but like mm-hmm. the the overall premise is like it gets a little hokey it's hell on a spaceship man <laughs> yeah, no, it's thank like you. Lovecraft, <laughs> I don't need hell too. Uh, I don't need so to weird. have hell on my spaceship. No, no thank you. No, not looking for that. I think spaceship. I'm gonna pass on that. And what just, if and teleportation he... became a thing, but they're like one out of a thousand, you end up in hell. <laughs> just like, just like we can't say. Wait, so wait, is it one out of a thousand people or one out of a thousand times? Could I you do imagine it? you go in a big group and like one person just going? <laughs> they're like, mm. oh, oh man, oh, 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 oh Jim, oh he's uh, in hell. Yeah, he's He'll in pop hell. back out. Give him time, guys. I think Jim's in hell. Yeah. Man. It'll never be the is same, but it'll pop back Is there anything we can out. do about it? No. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can take the trip, but there's a one in 1,000 mm-hmm. chance that you're going to end up in hell. Yeah. <laughs> That's slimmer than you'd want. <laughs> I don't know if I'd try it. I don't want to no, end I up wouldn't. in hell. You know what? I think I think we would, because one in 1,000, we'll probably be fine. Yeah, so there's enough people out there that yeah. don't like to think about the truth of percentages. Is there a way back from hell if you make it I to mean, hell? the ship popped out eventually. Yeah. <laughs> like it, and it was yeah, fine. Yeah, but their bodies yeah. were all... Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, it was fine. You're right. It, it, it was fine. Um, any shows that you think you wish were better, had some hype and I, not very good or... But I wish I wish uh, Ad Astra was better. I, I'm hearing bad things. I, Has it, anyone seen? Oh, guard. So, no, so visually, it's great. But you know, like the first. It, similarly, the first release of Blade Runner had that narration through it. Yeah. This has that through it uh, the whole time. Holding your but hand. But it, it feels huh? more. In, well, kind of. But also, like stuff. It's just like 
am I my dad or am I my anger? And then he just like stares at a wall for a little bit. Oh, and you're no. like, I don't. I, there, I, I, it treats you like you're an idiot. <laughs> you might want to catch it when it's streaming because there are there's like a whole shootout on the moon that's really cool. Like oh, that's it, oh, take, cool. it takes like big sci-fi stuff and grounds them into a, a more reasonable instead of like big space battles. It's, you're just literally trying to truck across the moon and other people are starting to shoot at you. And it's it's cool because I haven't seen stuff like that. But the voiceover is tough. That's the Brad Pitt thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we've been super loving on Dark Crystal. It's like our favorite right now. I keep trying to love start it because I it. know it's going to be great. It's so good. I was seeing a behind the scenes uh, VFX thing and it looked incredible. It's just it like, you so know, incredible. it's it's the, all the artistry that goes into it. They like, they really expanded upon Jim Henson's creative vision and in a way that I never thought they could if they were going to make a new Dark Crystal thing. But it does what I wish they do more often where they have the puppets. They have, this, this was a whole big chase sequence. And so they have the puppets, and then they green screen the stuff around them. Yeah. And, I, and I think it was that's. I wish we'd do that more, like um, in um, Where the Wild Things Are, yeah. that movie. There was a big practical monster, but then the facial expressions were CG. Yeah, like it had like CG help. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's the. Uh, be right back. My wife just gave me a call me ASAP text. Oh, be right. right. Well, you better Hope update us when okay. you come back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love it. I think you should see it. You should see it when you get a chance. I keep trying to start it, and then like the first like five minutes are like there are three stars. That yeah. Go and seven people we don't know the last one but these have wings and it starts getting it's explaining everything and I'm like just be patient yeah it you will, gotta it, stick with yeah, it there, it's eight hours of TV like right it's, it ten, it's ten hours because it's ten episodes yeah it's ten episodes so like I I will understand what's happening it just dumps a lot on you because I've never seen Dark Crystal I know enough of what it is yeah. I should just watch it though because it yeah, seems like I don't think like you need to see Dark Crystal to know because it's like a pretty you could just jump right? right into the I show I think so do you think it benefits not having seen Dark Crystal because because I think you know sometimes with prequels it's like you kind of know what's going to happen I mean tonally the shows are kind the 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 projects are a little different right like because like the Dark Crystal is this really dramatic art piece that's yeah. just like tonally very slow yeah. and it's a very slow burn and it's like more like a like a, almost like a nature documentary in a way that has like a story around it and i love it and appreciate it for what it was because i grew up with that shit but yeah. for a lot of people watching the dark crystal series you might get tricked into watching the dark the dark crystal movie and hoping it has the same kind of like action and yeah. and and kind of like forward motion momentum but it kind of doesn't okay. and 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 i really you know because i mean someone like elliot like elliot and grace said that they were watching it and they don't really watch things they don't watch movies they don't watch tv shows really they just kind of like whatever they're, they're not into it like elliot's not very much of a movie nerd or anything like that but he was watching it and he was like it's like it's like game of thrones but with like puppets essentially mm-hmm. and i was like yeah that's a good way to describe it and he's like man i guess maybe i should see dark crystal now the movie and i was like eh. <laughs> <laughs> maybe no, not maybe. it's not for everybody mm-hmm. i mean if you can sit if you can if you want to appreciate a, a time capsule of some weird like super like risky art piece that Jim Henson poured his heart and soul into and just thought maybe people would like it and they didn't really at first but it became a cult hit thankfully but it was just this it's just this big scent show piece of puppets and artistry yeah Yeah, because that and Labyrinth kind of Right, like yeah, critically, yeah, at least, yeah, at first, yeah, because yeah, because because now they're beloved. Everyone's seen, yeah, like, I'm not, and I'm bad, but everyone's seen Labyrinth. Mm-hmm. Have you guys seen Car- Carnival Row or whatever? <sighs> no. You haven't seen it yet. No, okay. I, I have you seen it? No, I want to okay, see it. I, I, I don't know what to think yet. It looks cool. It's a co- cool concept. Orlando uh, jo- bo- Bloom. Orlando <laughs> Bones. <laughs> Orlando's bones are in it, and so is. I'm uh, always, I, I guess I'm at a stage in my life wherever, whenever shows like, uh oh, people are prejudiced against Cara Delevingne. I'm like, no. I think she's great. <laughs> yeah, no, but I'm talking about within this universe, like because she has wings, oh, we oh, hate oh, her. It's oh, like, oh, I was like, no, no, that's still a crazy attractive <laughs> white girl. You're not. Come on, right? With who wings. has wings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, come on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I need to see that. I've been watching Righteous Gemstones, and I've also been watching, um, oh, uh, The Good Place, the the season that's that just popped up on, on Netflix. So three. The one that's, yeah, three. Very so I'm, I'm like about halfway Did into you, three. Have you, Jeremy Barrymy is in season three, right? Mm-hmm. Have oh, you I don't seen know Jeremy Barrymy? No, I don't think so yet. Yeah. You not met him yet? Yeah. No. Okay, yeah, when you get to him, yeah. you'll But you'll the new season's him. starting really soon, right? Or yeah. has it started already? No, no. the 20th, next week. Yeah. Damn. Oh, snap. Damn, I need to crutch the last one. Yeah, that's oh, it four. is the last one. They, oh, they, chose, they chose to end it with four. I yeah. did not know that. Oh, you know what? You know what um, show doesn't... It's weird because I'm throwing on the bus and I do like a lot of aspects of the show but that did not live up Hello. to it uh, is Legion. 
I just oh, finished shit. Legion. I don't want to hear that. Yeah. Because I saw season one yeah, and very absolutely good. fucking loved it. So good. I have not seen any more and I can't wait to. Uh, season two is great right up until a twist at the last minute in the last episode that season three does not know what to do with. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you agree, Sam? Yep. Oh, wow. I was because at the season, end of season two, it said the end. The, <laughs> <laughs> and then like, oh, no, we got a third season. What do we do now? It said, uh, Let's just redo season one. Yeah. A really cursed <laughs> Finn came up at the yeah. end of the episode. Episode. And then <laughs> FX was like, "Screw you, we're giving you another one." Yeah, and it's it's got a it's got a lot of cool ideas. There's these time creatures that are amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's visually uh, incredible, but it to it has to like bend over backwards to accommodate this twist and throw out a lot of the characterization and of mm. stuff of previous seasons. Mm. Uh, that it doesn't. Mm. Yeah, it's 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 tough. It's tough. Oh, it's tough. Basically, Lee, D- David is supposed to be somewhat of a villain, and they're like, "Okay, how do we get there?" Yeah. and they come up with a thing for him to that happens. Yeah, that he does, and you're like, hmm, takes that light. Wow. Well, that last slice of pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, you're yeah. like, I don't think I, I can get believe. over this. Yeah. This last slice of pizza. Yeah. That, was, that for was for the kids. <laughs> that, that was for somebody else. D- and don't then take there's pizza from kids. And then mm-hmm. there's somebody else who we've established early on also stole a slice of pizza. But for some reason, we're okay with her doing it, but not David doing it. And then the main bad guy is like, "Actually, I was trying to help the whole time." And you're like, well, uh, "Time out. That doesn't <laughs> like what what." Uh, which it's it, it was a bummer. There's still a lot to like about the show. Like the cast is great and, and a lot of interesting ideas. It just doesn't. It just kind of fell apart at the end, which is a disappointment. That's a bummer. Yeah, Joe, Joe is everything okay? Ooh, yeah, everything's good. No. Well, everything's not great, but everything's fine. It'll she saw fine. the last episode of Legion. She's like, she was very doesn't. upset. She's yeah. like, this twist yeah. doesn't yeah. make yeah. sense. Yeah. No, my daughter's got this um, coach. Uh, it's a new coach for a team that she's on, and last year it was a very regimented, like almost like militaristic schedule. She, yeah, uh, you knew you were going to be where you were, and if you weren't, there was potential to lose uh, your spot on the team. It's Oof. like you you, you, you wow. get used to that. Yeah. New coach is not like that. New coach has now canceled practices last minute. Like she's supposed to go to practice right when school ends. So bell rings, yeah. go to practice. We know she's going to be there for two hours. Last three practices canceled at the last minute families plan around this stuff yeah mm-hmm. and it's a it's a freaking nightmare that's not so cool. that's where we're at so what's she doing what's the cheer sport? oh cool uh that's com- cool. competitive cheer uh yeah. I, I would like to know your opinion on this are you one of the like is it is it like hey you need to either instrument sport something you need to sign up for something i want her to to engage in as much extracurricular as possible i'm into that but like also not Forcing her, but letting her know it's important. But she's kind of doing it on her own, so I don't really have to. Right now, we're in the... um, uh, I want to make sure she has arts in her life Mm -hmm. uh, somehow in any way, shape, or form. She used to do show choir, and then she stepped away from that. She just didn't like it anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, what are you going to do for art? And I'm like, I'm not going to force you to do anything. Just know it's important. If, if, If you do music and stuff like that, that helps with your schooling and makes you better at math and a bunch of other things. And... um. Instead, she's like, I just, I want to learn a foreign language. So she like, she's love it. Jumped into Spanish classes, and that's really cool. Yeah. Maybe she can teach me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she's, her, yeah. So she's, I'm not having to worry about that with her cheer, soccer, Girl Scouts. Still, like she's, cool. she's that's pretty so well cool. rounded. That's cool. She's well rounded enough that it's a problem for my schedule at times. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> is a she good wa- problem to have, I guess. Is yeah. she watching uh, Muzzy? Muzzy. Remember Muzzy? <laughs> I remember Muzzy. Yeah, you yeah. get the big book of cassettes and you put them in. Yeah, it was wow. like a '90s like commercial. <laughs> Oh, she's a uh, 100% now self identifies by Stranger Things and nothing else. There you go. She <laughs> loves it. She loves 80s music now. Cool. Like, it's she is on board to the point of I it's hard for me to even understand how much she loves it. <laughs> Um, I, I wish they still sent you those cassette. Like, if you signed up, they still send you cassette tapes. I know, like, right? What, that what would am be I nice. supposed to do with this? <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> try putting in it. You have to get like an adapter for your computer to put a cassette tape in there. Um. So now I want to play something with you guys called "Would You Rather," Uh-oh. and we do it sometimes at the end of this episode. And basically, what I do is I go to r slash Would You Rather on Reddit, mm-hmm. and then we just have some fun with some of these Would mm-hmm. You Rather's. Elliot refuses to play all the time. Yeah, I don't know why he hates it so That's much, so uh, but. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, he's a curmudgeon, and I hate him. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so let's play some of these, huh? How about that? Yay! Okay. Where's the cat? Where's the cat? You don't do the Reddit 
No, I don't know if that exists that, anymore. That that I would understand bailing. I on. don't think it exists anymore. <laughs> I think it might be unhealthy. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> I agree. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so guys, let's 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 present this. Would you rather? Would you rather only be able to walk everywhere, but never feel fatigued, mm. or teleport anywhere instantly, but feel just as fatigued as if you'd walked the same distance? Ooh, walking one hundred percent. Oh yeah, yeah. I like I like walking places. I like being able to. I met somebody at Fantastic Fest. Uh, he works for the Boston Underground Film Festival, and he talked about living in the city and being able to walk everywhere. Yeah, walking's yeah. nice. Yeah, um, I'm, like I'm going to take the teleporting because I agree with you. Yeah. But I can also choose to walk if I want to walk. But oh, if you I don't need to lose get, the ability yeah, to walk. If, That's fair. If yeah, I need wait, to get right, somewhere, you, you don't have to teleport. Yeah, it sounds like it's a choice. Yeah, you don't have to teleport. Yeah. But, okay, okay. I'm going to take the teleportation. I'd rather do but, teleporting, but too. But, like, you'd have to be very careful with where you teleport. Sure. Because you could teleport somewhere that could kill you if you walk there. Because <laughs> of the fatigue. Because of the fatigue. Yeah, yeah, yeah you just yeah. wake up dead. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what if that's how I want to go, though? <laughs> <laughs> I swear I'll teleport to China right now! Don't do it! <laughs> you just, like, start drowning. <laughs> <laughs> you teleport and you just... Like a like you're just a corpse. Yeah. As soon as right. you <laughs> it's yeah, like uh, it's like at yeah. the end of Last Crusade when he drinks from the wrong cup and he, he ages chose immediately. Poorly. Yeah. It's like after five <laughs> teleports, you just have these gigantic like quads and yeah, calves, yeah, yeah, yeah. and your body just keeps changing. <laughs> That's a new. Po- you don't need to work out now. You just uh, you just teleport. No, I would just go to sleep. I would just try to time it out of like okay, then I'm just gonna go to sleep as soon as like I how get many there. sleeps does it take uh, to get? Excuse me, I'm gonna go take a nap in Nevada. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, am I am I like physically worn out? Or am I just? It, wait, yeah, so you have like, the fatigue associated with walking that distance. Hmm. So whatever that would be for you, probably. I still like, want the surprise of teleporting I and know. Then, then passing out as soon as I get there. Everybody knows you're just it. dead. <laughs> yeah. What happened to this guy? He just teleported. Um, okay, how about this one? Wait, wait, you didn't answer. Oh, um, I guess the, I'd take the walk, yeah, the walking yeah, yeah. one. Yeah, because teleportation is cool, but even teleporting, like. Let's say like, oh, I want to go to Disneyland. Like, yeah. to teleport to Disneyland. I'd be like too fucking tired to do anything there. Yeah. I mean, I guess uh, you could get a hotel room or something and take a nap. You just plan around it. With yeah. the, but with the walking, now you get to walk all over Disneyland exactly. and not feel tired. Or I could walk to Disneyland and be like, I got like 12 hours to like, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, however long it would take to get to walk to Disneyland. Yeah, you just start at midnight and then you yeah. get there and then you do the rides and then you walk back and yeah, you're not fatigued at all. Yeah, not being fatigued at all. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, hmm. I, mean, I wonder sh- if that does that discount for like normal fatigue, like in a twenty four hour day, you're yeah, gonna just, you, you have to go to sleep at some point. Yeah. Does this mean you're never I fatigued? Guess it, no, Ooh. I guess it would just it would just you make probably, you feel the same amount of you fatigue. You probably still have a normal sleep schedule, yeah. so then it's not as advantageous as you might think. Well, I mean, because you stay gonna, up for twenty four hours, you're gonna start hallucinating and shit. And but you could do like a four hour walk and be like, I need to get somewhere, I'm just gonna walk for four Teleportation hours. Teleportation is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so here's another one. Would you rather discover the cure for cancer, but you won't have any credit or profit for it, or get fifteen million dollars right now? Cancer. Yeah. Uh, cancer. I yeah. know, right? You have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You want cancer gone. You don't want fifteen million dollars. I mean, fifteen million dollars would solve all of your problems, maybe, and and help your family and future families. I cause more problems. With but that's that. the thing. It's like mm-hmm. it's a selfish thing to have. It sounds million. like I would just give people cancer with that money. Yeah. Uh, you I empathetic can do whatever I want. fucks. <laughs> um, okay. Would you rather trim your front lawn and back lawn with only toenail clippers? Oh God. Or paint a fence with a toothpick with the paint palette one block away? <laughs> This is just fucked this, up. This is a lose lose. Yeah, they both suck, and one has more walking. Would you rather and one w- does have more walking? With unless you, you have, have that teleport, walk to, walk yeah. yeah, teleport or yeah. walk fatigue. Both uh, of those are hell. Both yeah. of those are hell. Both I, of those are a spaceship with hell. The only one it, you could do is the clipper one because at least you're in one place, and that it, paint's gonna dry on the toothpick. What the about time? this yeah. one? Would you rather shit fingernails or cry hair? <laughs> Cry hair. <laughs> I'm gonna have to cry hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh then God. You pull it Does out. these strings. <laughs> like you're not, the whole strand isn't. Do you guys know when you get like hair stuck oh, yeah. between oh, see, your that's the, well, legs and you gotta pull it out and it's got that weird foreign feeling? You know what I'm talking about? Think mm-hmm. about this. Think about this. Hair in the eye. 
very, it's very uncomfortable. Yeah. So maybe at least, at least maybe the you would learn to get the used to it. Maybe oh pooping the fingernails gosh. is at least that is designed to move to be a passageway for them. Are all curves with edges on them? I know. Mm-hmm. They they never know. All <laughs> curves with mm-hmm. edges. Mm-hmm. 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 Those are going to get stuck Something everywhere. Could get stuck. That's yeah. What I'm and saying. I put contacts in my eyes. My eyes are no nerve endings in there anymore. Uh, okay. How about this one? All the hair. Would you rather have an orgasm every time you see Shrek or sing All Star out loud every time you have an orgasm? All Star. That's easy. <laughs> Sorry, that's super easy. I already know the words. Somebody yeah. was so you'd be like the, the most whole song. <laughs> yeah, the whole fucking song. <laughs> I'm thinking the, the Shrek cool one. I take an orgasm seeing Shrek. Well, how often do you fucking see Shrek on the rarely. internet all the time? No, what are no, you no, no, about? no, no, no. <laughs> and honestly, the amount of times that I see Shrek an orgasm during for that amount of times, it'd be a welcome thing. And yeah. here's the thing: it doesn't sound like it's that's the only way you can orgasm. Yeah. No, it's no. just an unfortunate just way that happens all the time. The thing with an orgasm is that, you know, you got your, what, five to six seconds of elation, Mm -hmm. and that's just the somebody once told me line. You're going to be sitting there in your mess for the next (laughs) three to four minutes. That's okay. Unable to stop. Someone running away from you. Listen, Joe, let me introduce you to the world of discreet pampers (laughs) for adults. <laughs> okay, how about this one? Would you rather live Pampers All Star? Yeah. <laughs> Would you rather live ten years, but everything you say is made reality, or live a regular lifetime, but the only people you are allowed to talk to is your direct family? The what? first one is for, you live for you only live for ten, ten more years. You li- you. You live for ten years, yes, but but everything you say is made reality. That everything is is tricky. That's I like know. that's a, like a monkey's paw could situation. Could be a curse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So because you could just say like I wish whatever, and then it'll just happen. So I mean, if that's the case, you rig the system and you go, I want this, 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 everything you've ever wanted, and then at the end of it, you go, and also I don't want this power anymore. Bam. Bam. Whoa. Genie wishing for more genies. No. Yeah. Kind of thing. Did I just hack the system? Did I do it? I think so. I think you yeah. did. If anything yeah. you say comes to be, there ain't no rules that you can't change the rules. I wish I was immortal. There you go. Oh shit. Would it? But would, would, would it be would... set up to allow that though? That's the question. Okay, you make a clone body that appears at the ten year mark, and your brain transfers into it with the powers. But see, you know what? That's a, that's a big question of clone. That's a, people treat the clone as if it's you, but it's not you. It's but another right, yeah, independent put, 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 entity. Put my brain. And in also, it. you have yeah. to be careful about what you're talking about because we're we're saying it with the qualifier that we're saying I wish, but yeah. really you might go, Steve, you suck. Yeah, and then Steve's got to just start sucking. I think honestly, (laughs) I feel like that's the way. I feel like that's the way it's phrased. Everything you say, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's a nightmare, man. You're a piece of shit. Oh fuck! Oh Oh, no, no, I'm fucking it. Oh no! (laughs) (laughs) I hate everything. No. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, last one. Would you rather have a perfect memory of your past, picture perfect, photographic detail? Or to see one minute into your future, like forever. You could always look a minute into your future. Minute into the future. I'm so clumsy. If I could kind of start avoiding, I've stubbed my toes so much that I'm scared to get an x ray. I don't want to, I don't want to, I'd rather have the one minute. You could also be like, like, uh, oh shit, I'm in a dangerous situation. Let me just take a look here. Uh, okay, okay, I'm safe. Yeah, I wonder no. if that means, like, in a in a in the theory of time and relativity, if you can change your path in future yeah. with that knowledge. And oh, minute, interesting. What a if minute's not that long. And also, is it is it something you activate, or are you just always one minute? Like, you're always cutting people. Yeah, this off is that Nicolas like, Cage superpower yeah, yeah, yeah. from that damn movie. It what says in, in in the bylaws of this particular "Would You Rather," it says you can see one minute into your future clearly in your head like an instant one minute movie that you comprehend in milliseconds okay so you yeah yeah it's very useful yeah. i'd rather have that i mean it's like you could win every game show ever probably you could mm-hmm. keep you could win trivia contests and things like that that's the big one it, you, the, could, you could the, be like am i about to say something stupid to this mm-hmm. person and then be like oh okay i guess i am so i'll say something else you start like every person in the room you start scanning your conversation be like okay this is the person i want to talk to is that what are the, is benefits? the nick cage movie uh what are the benefits of 
knowing your past, having a but being perfect able to memory it's just past. nice. I mean, it's nice. Yeah, being able to revisit. <laughs> you could revisit your any memory from I your past in photographic detail. No, I revisit too much of my past already. Yeah, imagine, but imagine all the all dark the good stuff, stuff that yeah. you imagine all the dark true. stuff that you've forgotten on purpose because of trauma. Yeah, yeah. You know? um, that's true. But some memories from the past are precious, and some of the best mm-hmm. you'll ever have. And they t- they made you who you are today. Made you who you are today. Yeah, mm-hmm. but see now when I get to revisit them because of memory degradation, I get to imagine them as not as bad as they probably were. <laughs> I guess that's you true. Know. Yeah, but I mean, eventually you lose all of it, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, listen, this has been a blast. It's been an absolute fun time having you boys here. A treat. Thank it's a you. treat. We want you back, obviously, anytime. And uh, we'd love to maybe do a little something. Like, I'd love to go on your guys' show or vice versa or have Joe yes, on please. or whatever. Yes. We would love to have Take him. Elliot and force him to watch some shit he'd never watch <laughs> yeah. on his own. <laughs> you know what I'm excited to force somebody to watch something they would never watch is uh, my wife has watched Blue Velvet with me and Punch Drunk Love, and she hates all of that. I'm going to make her watch Mandy with me, though. Oh, shit. What Mandy do you think she'll think? So I, good. You I like know, it? I love Mandy. I know. I, I don't Mandy know. Mandy felt I like drugs. Yeah. There, There is a slim chance she might like it. Wow. But uh, but I just ne- I just need her to understand. I love Man, doing it's a that. weird special movie. Yeah. I like that yeah. movie. Yeah, it's a very very cool movie. Um, well, I want you to report back. If I will you do that. Please, I will. We should make Elliot watch it too. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. We should have a movie night and watch. Yeah, Mandy I think he, he might be down for that one. Yeah. 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 Um. All right. Well. Anyway, one more time. You guys want to plug your guys' stuff? Yeah. Go to onlystupidanswers.com. You can find our YouTube uh, info there. youtubecom slash onlystupidanswers. It might be awesome. Also, our podcast goes up every Monday. Only stupid answers. On all the platforms, you can go listen there. We're going to be talking about Fantastic Fest this yeah. week. We've got reviews you can listen to. And also, I'm starting out a new show called One More Time with One Sam time. Basher. So you can go and check that out. I'm going to be watching Avatar The Last Airbender and then just a bunch of really shitty movies. <laughs> so it's going to be a good time. DJ, you got anything you're working on? Or uh, anything yeah, you wanna... but not, it's not, at not any, ready yet. Yeah, it's not at any point where I can be talking about it. Okay, well, come back when you're ready. It is, it it's is. juggling. Yeah, yeah, you, ra- you got me. You come got back me when you're ready to talk about okay. some of your stuff. Five and balls then, uh, is really hard. Mm-hmm. What is f- oh, juggling five balls? Mm-hmm. I just got. I'm starting with the one. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Well, that's the that. that's the toughest part. Got to start somewhere. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening to the Valley Cast. We appreciate you guys, and also check out our Patreon, patreoncom slash folk to uh, get in on some of that special stuff over there, like this podcast early and all sorts of special little treats you can check out over there. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's about it. That's all I gotta say. Joe, you got to say anything? You want to say anything? No, I think you said it all. I love you guys. Thank you for hanging out. Yeah, we love you too. Thank you for coming. You guys are good boys and we'll have you around again, okay? Please. All right, goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye -bye. Where's the cat? (laughs) 